Welcome to my deck review today of Aiden. I got tower number nine here to showcase this deck. Um, he actually defeated me in the league. Uh, I think I still placed above you, I think, but you, I played my Sabine <laughs> list and we were joking because I think he's got two higher ELO than me, but um, I was just, you were the only person that I played that I played that actually had Red Iden and you completely swept me um, to owed me in the tournament or in the, in the top, uh, take the initiative league. So I was really intrigued by your deck list and I wanted to do a deck review on it. And I'm glad you were able to kind of make it here to talk through the deck. Yeah, happy to be here. Awesome, well, let's get started here. So I have a similar breakdown to what I've done before, um, but this is his overall deck list, which I'll put it in the description if you're okay with that. Um, just a link to it. Yeah, seems good. Cool. And so if anyone wants to pilot their own version of it, um, go ahead and try it out. Uh, it's linked in uh, SwooDB. Great. So let's do a breakdown of every single card. So I got the the one drop here. Um, I'll kind of leave it to you to talk through why it's in the deck, its function. I'll kind of give any comments that I have um, and what it was like to play against it, to be honest. Yeah, so Death Star Stormtrooper, the reason that I really like this card is because it's another three power unit that you can deploy in the early game and take out uh, annoying aggro uh, drops like the Battlefield Marine um, in particular is a two cost three three really prevalent with some of the rebel aggro decks and this three one trades with it. Um, you can also, uh, you can trade with a large majority of units that people are going to play on the first turn. There are a few exceptions, so it does badly into one fours, but we haven't been seeing as, mu as many of those recently. And it has an interesting interaction with Sabine Ran Explosives Artist, where if the opponent has the initiative, they can attack with Sabine into the trooper and defeat the trooper with the on attack ability and you don't do damage back. So that's like a potential counter or negative situation. But if you have the initiative, you can play it into Sabine Explosives Artist just fine. And additionally, if they do end up attacking into it, um, you ended up paying one to save three life on your base, which isn't necessarily the best, but is still buying you some time. Yeah, I, I can totally validate that. I felt like that this card was honestly, even playing it later when you have like a floating resource, on the next turn, you would use it to either push a bunch of damage because you had you had swung the tempo of the game. Um, and I put in here that it has synergy with your the next card that's going to show up because I feel like you did this against me where you almost pivoted from control to aggro on me because this card, I mean, it hits for a lot. It's, you know, three damage on a stick. The only other card in the game that I feel like that costs this is Greedo um, and does this, effect, this much damage on its own. Um, so I felt like it was yeah. really strong. It was really... You know, it was like a fake removal spell where you just kind of used it to attack in and trade with something. But you were removing some like mid game stuff with it, too, which. Oh, yeah. You know, this trades with the Echo Base Defender, you know, which is a three cost card that people are going to be playing on turn two for amount of time. It trades with it actually trades with more more than you more than you might expect, because that I feel like three HP is sort of an is sort of an important breakpoint. So even though you only have one HP yourself, getting that three power lets you deal with a lot of the early game units. Yeah, totally. I think this is a great card. And I wasn't expecting to play against it when we matched up because I saw Aiden. And I know you're playing red, but you usually see this in like a Vader, like a Vader deck or a Palpatine deck. So I yeah. felt like it kind of came out of nowhere. Great. So the next card that kind of plays Synergy is the Snowtrooper Lieutenant. Do you want to kind of talk about this card? Yeah, so the Snowtrooper Lieutenant, uh, what this card does is it, is it gives you a little extra reach um, by allowing one of your other units to attack with increased power. And the there are two main ways to use it. So one way that you can do it is to allow a unit to punch above its weight uh, in, in attacking into another unit. Um, the other thing that you can do with it is you can use it to put more pressure just on the opponent's base if need be. And one of the things that I like about this is it's just a... It's kind, it's kind of a combat trick, so like in a sense it's a two-drop unit, but you really don't want to play this on turn one unless it's your only play. Uh, just because, you know, playing, a, playing it as a two-cost 2-2 two -two with no ability, that's pretty inefficient. If you have another play, it's probably going to be better, but, you know, sometimes you might have to do that just because you don't have anything else, or maybe your opponent played a space unit and it's, and it's going to be safe to put this on the field. But that little extra reach and combat trick nature gives you uh, gives you the ability to maybe surprise your opponent sometimes. 
you know, in, in conjunction with that, uh, with that stormtrooper or with the Viper probe droid, you can actually hit for five, which is going to clear a lot of stuff, uh, even even into the mid game. You know, you can have four drop and even five drop units that have five HP, and you can take them out with a small unit plus this guy, and then you're left with a two two on the board that you can maybe get some value out of as well. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think this is obviously the Imperial version of Fleet Lieutenant. Both both those cards sort of action economy they get to do two things you play a unit and get yep. to do something else with a slight bump if you're able to meet its criteria which this deck i think there's almost no card that's not imperial am i wrong about that it's every card imperial? Uh, I, 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 I yeah let me think about that i think every or almost every card is imperial um i will say that the i think the fleet lieutenant is a better card but I think the Snow Trooper Lieutenant can still be a useful trick in the right situation. And there's also some cases where it allows you to potentially kill an enemy unit and leave your unit alive in a surprising way. So like this Viper Probe Droid that you just highlighted, for instance, um, if someone leads off with a 1-4 and I lead off with Viper Probe Droid and then Snow Trooper Lieutenant, they're 1-4, not only have I defeated their unit surprisingly, but my unit stays on the board. So that can be uh, pretty nasty. Yeah, yeah, I hate I hate how this card basically takes all the mystery out of my hand because, you know, whatever deck you're probe. playing, yeah, it really, like, being able to sort of be like a chess player and kind of, you know, be this sort of architect behind your actions, this card cuts into that a little bit where you can read what I'm going to do a little bit more with that information it gives you. Yeah, yeah this card's very good. Um, it is... You know, when the game was first being previewed and we were seeing a bunch of other cards, there was a period where this card wasn't popular, but it's become more popular recently, and I think it's really strong. That 3-2 stat line lets you trade with early game units. Because he does have the 2 HP, it isn't vulnerable to Sabine Explosives Artist or to ISB Agent or other like one damage ping effects in the same way that that trooper is. And yeah, you cost two instead of one, which can be awkward in later turns in particular if you're trying to play multiple cards in one turn. But the when played effect to see your opponent's hand, like you said, takes a lot of the mystery and guesswork out of the situation and sometimes lets you know what to do for uh, for this lady, the regional governor. Yeah, I, I hate this card. I, I feel like I made this joke <laughs> before we started. This is meddling mage for Magic the Gathering, but on a Star Wars Unlimited card. Um, they do the yep. same thing, right? So meddling mage, name it on land card, your opponent can't play it. Actually, nobody can play it, which is interesting. Yeah, but for the most regional part, governor's a little better. It's only the opponent who can't play the named card. Yeah, it's a little better. I felt like this card on turn one, if you slam it and say A-Wing or, you know, any card you know is is played in the list your opponent's playing, you can totally shut down my opening play. Um, I actually think when I did play you, um, you did say A-Wing and that was the only turn one play I had. I feel like I had to do something else really bizarre or just ping or something. I don't even remember what I did, but it totally shut down my, my turn one. It just had a bad draw. Uh, didn't have I didn't have the way to didn't have the option to play in either arena uh, space or ground and you just said a wing and it shut me down it's really strong yeah I had a um I had a game against a against a different opponent where I believe he was playing a Leia aggro deck and turn one <laughs> I played this and said a wing and my opponent legitimately just conceded the game right then because that was his only turn one play and he's and he had I, I think it was I think it was maybe even worse than that. I think he was maybe planning to do like A-Wing into Wing Leader or something like that. So now he didn't have the A-Wing and then his second turn play was also bad because he didn't have something to buff with the Wing Leader or something, <laughs> but he legitimately just scooped the game right there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, hey, hey, why counter or remove in response? Or, hey, why would you just can't even play it? Like, it's just, it's yeah. set next level. It's very strong. I could see this card being played like a year from now when the meta's evolved. Cards like this just have really strong mainstay potential great yeah, card one thing i'll say about the regional governor is that um it's not as good a card to play if you aren't as familiar with the meta or with what sorts of cards your opponents are likely to be playing in certain decks so you know if i see certain leaders and setups i you know it's pretty likely i might want to name you know maybe i want to name a wing maybe i want to name wing leader maybe you know but i know what those cards are and if you're a newer player and you see your opponent's uh you see your opponent's leader and you don't really have a clear idea of what or like important early plays there are going to be it becomes a more difficult scenario with this card yeah totally i i think it's more of a competitive card more of a spike spiky right people who are looking to play really complicated strategies, know the meta. 
Um, it's probably really bad and limited, right? This is a constructed card. It's terrible and limited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you do not play this card in limited. I mean, <laughs> maybe like if maybe. you really have to fill, fill a spot, but like it, no, it relies on having some degree of knowledge of your opponent's deck. And yes, you can get that from effects like the Viper Probe Droid, but also you can have a lot of knowledge of your opponent's deck just by understanding the meta and stuff like that. And that's a lot less true in Limited, where decks are going to be playing sort of luck-of-the-draw type cards more than something that's really, like, on meta, finally constructed. Yeah, yeah it makes a lot of sense. All right, Inferno 4. I didn't even realize this was a unique. I did not even notice that yeah. until just now. Um, but yeah, what do you think yeah, about this Yeah, this card? is a... Uh, I think it's uh I think it is a solid card. I so Inferno 4 is not like fantastic. It's not something super incredible. If I could replace it with Restored Arc 170 and have that be an aspect, I almost certainly would. I love Restored Arc and the Restore works really well with what this deck would be trying to do. But Inferno 4, you know, you get a basic uh you get a basic unit that you can deploy in the space arena and that has better stats than the Thai LN and the when played and when defeated here allows you to look at your top cards and you know maybe you're in you know maybe you're in a situation where you're playing against sabine and you see some of your late game cards uh, in game one you haven't sideboarded them out yet or whatever and you can send those to the bottom of the deck or you know maybe you're late in the game and you're looking for those big cards and you see you know viper probe droid and you know the death star stormtrooper and you're like nope i'm gonna send those to the bottom and try to get more chances to drop palpatine and yeah. the fact that you get this effect again when the card is defeated just gives you that extra bit of filtration. So overall, not only is it a just solid card for its stats to have something in the space arena, it also has a nice little ability. Yeah, yeah, it helps you find what you need for sure. And then your your two drop removal <laughs> here, force choke. Yeah, that's just uh, you know, it's a solid it's a solid removal piece. It has very very efficient damage for cost compared to other options in this game. Um, it can get cheaper still if you control a force unit, but that's not that's not really much of a factor in this deck. So I do have like Count Dooku and Emperor Palpatine, but those are quite late game. And I actually think that the downside of Force Choke, where the opponent gets to draw a card if you use it on their unit, makes it so that this card's value is actually a lot less in the late game, and I often resource it because you know early on in the game you know this can this can stifle some aggression for a cheap price and yeah they get to draw a card but like they're probably already spending all their resources so like they're mm -hmm. not going to be actually able to play that for some time but late in the game you know players are lower on cards higher on resources and that card that you're giving them represents more value i'm not saying never play it in the late game but the value proposition shifts and it becomes worse in that scenario i believe yeah, that's actually, I didn't even think about that. That's a really great way to play this card. That's good, really, really good insight. Um, I I did find when I played against this card, I would just go space after I played you a couple times because we jammed a couple more fun yep, games. Yep. And I started to gear more to space because your early plays were weaker in space and this pretty much cannot target anything in space because of the, the non-vehicle Yeah, I, I, I believe all space units in the game are vehicles, and that might change. You know, maybe we're gonna see like the space slug from Empire Strikes Back or something. <laughs> but at least for now, Force Choke space whales. Work on space units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that and that actually is a big downside. Um, it, it is not a very flexible card, but uh, for the time being, most of the threats in the game are in the ground arena. So you know, you do have that ability. Uh, you do have that ability to use it in the more important arena overall. For sure. Yeah, let's move to three drops here. I don't know if there's much to be said about this card. It's a 3-3 three, three Sentinel. Nope. Kinda. Yeah, it's like, so 3-3 three, three Sentinel, it's not very efficient for its price. There are other Sentinels that do a similar thing, but better. Echo Base Defender is a 3-cost 4-3 three, three Sentinel. There are some conditional 3-4 yeah. Sentinels, but the Cell Block Guard is reliable. I'm not running Cunning, so there's not really a way for me to get the, um, not really a way for me to, I, I'm sorry, I'm not running Command, so there's not really a way for me to get the Emperor's Royal Guard in here, which I do think is a better card, um, and I also just don't have that many officials, so that's not really something that's going to work for me. If I were playing Krennic, I would probably try to get Emperor's Royal Guard and more officials in here, because I think, I think that is... That extra point of stats is actually really important, but the cell block guard, you know, it does its job. Three cost, three, three sentinel. You know, it does its job. It'll probably absorb yeah. an attack or two. It, it can hold off some early aggression. This one's a little bit more interesting, the death trooper. Yeah. I feel like this card's really good. Do you want to talk about this card? 
Yeah, so Death Trooper is an interesting card. I currently think the card is somewhat overrated, but I still run it because overrated doesn't mean that it's bad. The thing that I that annoys me about this card is that its ability is mandatory. And so uh, if you have a situation where you the opponent doesn't have a ground unit out, or they have a ground unit where doing two damage to it doesn't really change the math. Um, like, you know, let, let's say you have a cell block guard, they have a 3-3, three, three, and you can play this Death Trooper. Um, in that situation, if the ability were non-mandatory, I would probably prefer to just put a unit on the field as a 3-3. Three, three. But you have to damage yourself and damage them, even if it's not necessarily what you want. And even if they don't have a unit, you have to do the self-damage part of it. So that can be annoying. But the caveat is that the Death Trooper can take out a bunch of units when you play it. Damn it. <laughs> and sometimes gets a great two for one opportunity. You know, if someone has something like Wolf or Lothal Insurgents or like one of those Viper probe droids that we were talking about earlier, some like three, two, three, one type unit, you get to play your Death Trooper, defeat their unit. Yeah, you do damage to yourself, you end up as a three, one, but then you still have that on the field to potentially trade with a further unit. So in yeah, the totally. right situation, this card can get a really nice two for one, which is great. And that kind of makes up for its inflexibility. So it's re it's really good when it's good, and it's good enough when it's good that I run it despite it being pretty annoying when it's bad. Yeah, I find I find that people often target itself with with its effect, which makes makes it susceptible yep. to Sabine, uh, explosive artist, and Vader's ping as well. Those like common effects yep. in the in the meta right now. It can end up just being like removed really easily, and then you're down a card. You might have put your opponent down a card, but you're spending three resources. Right. They're not, and that puts you behind on board, on efficiency. This card yeah, is really really ping, good. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this so this card. This is like the opposite of Death Trooper. So this card, <laughs> I think, is one of the more underrated cards in the game right now. I think it's really good. And a lot of people are not playing it or are only playing it in sideboard. So what this this card gives a unit minus two, minus two for the phase and heals two damage from your base. So uh, there are several points that make this good. So first off, giving a unit minus two, minus two defeats enemies through shields. And there are a few units that are two HP shielded that are very relevant in the meta right now. So... Um, most notably, we have Crafty Smuggler and Seventh Fleet Defender, really prevalent cards in those Boba Fett decks. And make an opening kills them while healing your base, and it does so with one card. You don't have to deal with their shield first. Yeah, I um, find it interesting too that the art on this. I think he's blowing up a Death Trooper. Is he not? Death Trooper. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. It's funny. Um, yeah, it's really good. The, it's kind of um, like in it's like in Magic: The Gathering where something gets minus five, minus five, and if it has indestructible it dies anyways it's like the same concept where something gets minus minus and if it has a shield you're not doing damage but it has more like less than one toughness so then it instantly just dies or goes right, goes to yeah. the, the discard pile yeah you you can also sometimes use this to like set up a combo with another unit so like you know maybe someone has i don't know you know maybe somebody has a unit that is like a three five and you have a 3-3. Three, three. So like that's a pretty unfavorable situation, but you play make an opening on it. Now their unit is a 1-3. Your 3-3 three, your three, three can attack into it and live. And even though it's not action efficient, you got that extra healing yeah. to help out. That's the, what puts um, this the card healing over... is really important against Edgar. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's what puts this card over the edge for me is it really, really shuts down aggro because it kills a lot of early stuff for aggro. And it has the attached on heal. So it's got like two things yeah. going for it that really shut down aggro. I think against like, I mean, I'm assuming in a mirror match, you you may sideboard one of these out or something like that. I, I imagine it's probably a little bit less useful. Yeah, there are um, there are some decks for sure where this is less this is less important. It kind of depends on the specific units that they're playing. So if I'm playing against my exact deck. Yeah, this card is good against Viper Probe or against the 3-1 Stormtrooper. It's at least okay. You know, it's not that efficient to play a 3-cost to deal with a 1-cost. But at least you get the healings. So that's potentially good. Um, you can use it on Death Trooper, like as the art suggests, if they've uh, if they've dealt damage to itself. But it's not, it's not going to be the same value as it is against a deck that's more aggressive, against a deck that's running those shielded units. So I do think it gets sided out in some matchups probably, but in the matchups where it's good, it's really good. And those matchups include both aggro and boba who are very popular right now. Yeah, and this seems like a card you probably don't side out. This card's really strong. I think it's- No, yeah. Yeah, just four damage to oh. something. 
super versatile. You know, it works in all kinds of situations. It doesn't care about what arena you're in. That's another yep. upside of making opening. It works on space units as well as ground, unlike the Death Trooper. Um, yeah, this, but yeah, this, open fire. He's shooting into space, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, open fire, you know, I think when this card was previewed, there were people that are like, oh, you know, this card's going to get phased out. This isn't something that we're going to see in competitive play. I think they got it wrong. I think this is, this is like, actually, I would say kind of the standard that other removal cards are compared to just in terms of it's basic, it's flexible for, uh, so I, I, I was saying earlier that three HP is an important break point. So is four, um, this card can deal with a lot of units that cost the same as it, or even more than it. Yeah. Um, uh, especially if you're shooting into space where units have worse stats. So if someone plays a four cost system patrol craft, you can take it out with this open fire. Um, but the, yeah, you know, it, it's flexible. It can set up, uh, it can set up kills even on larger units with Tarkin Town. I don't think it was with this deck, but I once had a game where somebody played home one and I played open fire on it and then killed it with Tarkin Town. It's like, man, you know, my base and three cost event just took out a like eight cost uh, battleship here. That's pretty good. That's value. insane. Yeah, we'll we'll focus on your. I think that's what's interesting is that Death Trooper open fire all synergize with your base, which we'll get to in the end here as we kind of wrap up the yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the main deck here. All right, well, so I'm about to sneeze. All right, let's go to four drops here. So this card is very, very strong. I think it's probably one of the main reasons why you're in red instead of uh, command. Um, yeah, this card is great. Yeah, this card's excellent. Yeah, I guess. What What do you like about this card? What do you see it doing for you in matchups? Yeah, so this card is like the Death Trooper, but better, but in space. Um, so it's a it's a little bit more expensive. It doesn't damage itself though. Uh, if you think of the Death Trooper as basically coming in as a three one because of the self damage, this comes in as a three two. So you know, a little bit better. But the um, the Thank fact you. that it does three damage instead of two damage is actually really important. The um, there are a lot of little space fighters in this game that have. Uh, there are a lot of little space fighters in this game that have say hi, three say HP. Hi. You didn't brush your teeth. I didn't brush my teeth. <laughs> yes, you did. You didn't brush your teeth, Ryan. I did. You're gonna be on YouTube. Here, you want to watch the show? Show. Sure. Uh, was there anything that okay, you missed so on this card? Uh, yeah, so the the Imperial Interceptor, it's just, it works really well against a lot of the early units. The fact that it does three damage instead of the Death Troopers two damage means that it takes out units like uh, Green Squadron A-Wing, Alliance X-Wing, uh, a lot of, you know, Cartel Spacer. It red can three. knock the shield yeah. off of a 7th Fleet Defender. Yeah, Red 3 is like a, is a very, uh, very nice one. Uh, you can sometimes take that unit out before it even gets a chance to attack because they play it on three resources and then next turn on four resources, you get to uh, zap them. And the nice thing is then you're left with this 3-2 body afterwards, which is enough to take out uh, other, another, you know, another one of those little fighters. So, Or uh, or you could use Tarkin Town with this to kill a Falcon or a late, more late game yeah. unit like... Um... Would you, you can take out Fett's Fire Spray like that. That's Fire Spray. Yeah, this card's really strong. Or even you just play this into Fett's Fire Spray, Tarkin Town Fett's Fire Spray and kill it. Really yeah. strong. Yeah, absolutely. Probably the best space unit in the deck, in my opinion. I, I felt like just the... Yeah, the, the, the Interceptor is it's sick. Maybe the Raider is better, but the Interceptor is so good. Yeah, it's better, but this comes out earlier, which I think is why right. I, I value it higher when I play against it. I just, I really want to make sure you don't have that card. Yeah, into aggro, the Interceptor, I think, is definitely better than the Raider. In some of the more, like, late-game matchups, the Raider, you know, is higher value for your card, but yeah. Yeah, totally. The System Patrol Craft here, another one that's kind of oriented towards fighting aggro. It's, um, it, it's like, 4 for a 3-4 Sentinel isn't incredible, but 4 for a 3-4 Sentinel is enough to potentially defeat two of those smaller space fighters, which can be a big problem for aggro. Maybe they have some trick, maybe they have some way to defeat it, but it often at least absorbs some damage, absorbs an attack or two, and preserves some uh, preserves some HP on your base. I think I typically run... I don't remember what my current sideboard setup is exactly, but I think I have two of these main deck and one yep. sideboard where I put the third one in specifically if I'm against uh, like a rebel aggro or some other thing where they have a bunch of those small space fighters because this does well against those. Yeah, yeah, space is tough to defend in. You got to have a sent like having a sentinel just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then take down here. Yeah, solid removal card. That's actually Iden Versio on the art. You can't tell that easily because she's wearing her helmet. But if you played 
Star Wars Battlefront 2, the modern version. Uh, <laughs> I think this card is actually named after the like melee takedown thing you could do in that game in the single player campaign. But um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's let, some cool yeah, flavor. Too see. bad her showcase didn't have the helmet or something. And there's like there's no helmet in any of the art, right? I don't think there yeah, is. Yeah, it's true, but uh, I, but I believe I believe that is Aiden in the art. The um, anyway, yeah. So you know, defeating unit with five or less remaining HP. You know, yeah. It's uh, another strong removal card. Works on ground and space. Goes through shields uh, because it's not damage based. You can defeat Sabine with this immediately, though that's not always something that you necessarily want to do. You can defeat um, a large number of units that cost this value or sometimes even more. Um, yeah. And yeah, just a solid removal piece. The main downside being that it is, uh, you know, it is, it is a little expensive. Yeah, it's yeah, conditional. And it, is, too. and it is a little conditional. Yeah, I, I play yeah. around this a lot. We're all wing leaders, certain units to get them over that five toughness point. Um, especially if your board is empty or you have a weak board where I make you have to sacrifice a unit and play this. That's the only way around this card. But against most decks, you can find a target for this. <laughs> Takes out Boba, the unit Boba, um, pretty easily. Yeah. Great. So now we're going to go to five, six, and seven drops because I, I thought of a way to break this up, but you actually only have one copy of each. So one one set of five drops, one set of six drops, and one set of, of uh, seven drops. The most interesting card in here is Hask. Do you want to... I don't really yeah. know what to say about this card. I guess what's the purpose of this card in the deck? Yeah, so the thing that... So Gideon Hask um, is an interesting card because... One thing that this deck kind of suffers from, in my opinion, is that sometimes you're in a situation where you have a lot of removal, but you don't have like good targets to remove. And you sort of have just a passive, like a, a, a reactive sort of hand, and you can kind of end up at loose ends. Gideon is a more proactive card where you can set him up on the field, and he represents a lot of potential value as the game goes on. Um, Unlike some cards, so five five drops are kind of a weak point in the cost curve. Uh, I'm probably going to make a video on this at some point, but basically the like stats that you get for a five cost are not quite as good as at some other cost levels. But the um, the ability here is quite relevant because it is active. So he, it doesn't say another friendly unit. So he can, he can actually give an experience token to himself. So even if he's your only unit, he is a potential source of major value as the game goes on. Um, he has, you know, decent stats. Like not, the five cost stat is uh, the five cost price point isn't that efficient, but he is, you know, efficient compared to other five costs. And he gives me something to do in situations where, uh, you know, maybe I've removed a bunch of their stuff, and you know, we have this unit on the board, and it's like, okay, you know, what's what's gonna you know, what's going to come next. He gives me something that I can do that's a little more proactive in terms of setting up uh, a source of value that isn't reliant on, you know, my opponent having a, a little space unit for my interceptor to take out or whatever. Right. Yeah, it's a value engine. I feel like I noticed that like mid game, you start to like removal starts to kind of be mad, but you're able to eke out a little bit of extra value or trading a unit into something. We trade units, but you get a to experience you token out of it and to buff something else on the board. I found that pretty frustrating. And that sort of just accelerates your end game a little bit. And I got to imagine in the mirror match probably puts your units like, well, my item's a 5-5 five five now and yours is a 4-4 four four because of Gideon. <laughs> so just like sometimes one experience token can make or break a whole game. It's crazy. Yeah. And this ability can fire multiple times in a turn, so potentially a lot of value. Yeah, now Ruthless Raider, I hate this card. I hate playing against it, but I'm sure you love it. Um, besides yeah, so this closer is, potential, uh, uh, what else? What else do you like about this card? It's it's very flexible. You know, you so you get the damage to the opponent's base, but when you play it, you also deal two damage to a unit that can be on ground or in space. Um, so that can potentially, you know, ping off a unit that's low on HP or, or a smaller unit that the opponent has in the game. You get you get both of those effects again when this unit is defeated, which is very convenient. Uh, it allows you to get, you know, maybe it, it's very easy to get a two for one or better with this card because of the damage to the opponent's unit, the pretty beefy stats for a space unit. And then the fact that you're going to get that effect again if they remove it, it's hard for someone to remove this efficiently. And it also puts more pressure on their base. Just overall a pretty solid card. Yeah, I also tend to just try it. Yeah, it's very good. I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. it can target early mm -hmm. stuff. It can target late game stuff, like stuff that you are you have damage on but haven't killed yet, haven't removed yet fully. 
Um, it's just, it, when, when somebody plays it, you try to ignore it because it has that when defeated clause. It's like, man, it's kind of like K2. If I, if I kill it, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a downside. And if I leave it, I'm going to get a downside. It's like a win-win card, yeah. um, for, for yeah. the person who plays it, which these cards tend to be really good. Like no matter what you do besides waylay, like bounce it to your hand, it's going to do something relevant to the game. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Awesome. Count Dooku, the Separatist Sith Lord. Yeah, so Count Dooku is, is one of a broad cycle of seven cost units that uh, get to remove something when you play them and then have pretty good stats. So the other ones, you know, Han Solo, uh, like Unit Han, Unit Luke, or like Jedi Luke as people call him, uh, Darth Vader commanding the First Legion, Count Dooku. So all of these seven costs with pretty good stats usually get a kill when you play them and then stick around to fight. Um, Dooku is probably the worst of those four, but he's still like, he, but he's still good enough. You know, he has uh, he has the ability to take out a space unit, which um, which Han cannot do and Vader cannot do easily. There's, you know, there might be some weird situation where Vader can pull a unit that's relevant in space, but he um, his ambush the the ambush based ones don't work on space units. And, you know, after that, 5-4 shielded, pretty good stat line. You know, you can pressure the opponent's base, you can fight with their units. So is he a super fantastic card? I, I wouldn't say he's, he's like the best in his class, but he gets the job done. I think I'm currently on two copies of this guy. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I think if he was six, he would be crazy good. And seven kind yeah. of pushes him at okay, but not broken. I think if he was one right, cheaper, yeah. this card would be taken over the game. Um, interesting. Yeah, how... if I could play if I could play Jedi Luke instead of Count Dooku, I absolutely would. If I could play Vader commanding the First Legion instead of Count Dooku, I absolutely would. But that, those aren't the uh, you know those aren't the colors that I have set up. So we're playing Count Dooku, and he gets the job done. Yep. Yeah, he does. Absolutely. Awesome. So let's take a look at your base here. So you got Tarkin Town. Um, pretty obvious. It synergizes with with I think three cards in your deck that that ping for damage when played. Death Trooper. Uh, force choke and ruthless raider. Am I missing anything there? Open fire. Yeah, the uh, it also works with open fire. Also, actually works with imperial interceptor. Um, really, oh, there's like a yeah. lot of it. Also, but honestly, Tarkin Town works with like everything. Tarkin Town works with just like making normal attacks with your units, right? So this is actually a card that is it's very it can be very effective in the right uh, in the right situation. I think this is the second best base in the game. The best base in the game is energy conversion lab. But Tarkin Town is also a really solid base, and it goes well with some of these other damage effects. Yeah, I think to be honest, I've actually played a Leia game where I played around Tarkin Town, where I basically traded units that had damage on them because I knew that was a valid target for them. And I, I the entire game, they never had priority action or you know the initiative or or their action, they were never able to use. They had no valid targets, so it's just. In your nice. deck, though, it's like it's impossible. There's just no way you're not going to have a valid target because you have so many cards that stick damage on something. And if you don't if you don't finish it, you can use Tarkin Town. Like even at a home one, where you're able to 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 just pile on damage when your opponent when you shouldn't be able to. The base allows yeah. you to do that. Yeah, very yeah, strong in this deck. It's a very solid base. Very solid base. Yeah, I think honestly, what's astounding about this build is that you're. In my opinion, when I play against it, Tarkin Town felt like you could just get it to remove anything you wanted with the cards you had in your deck. And sometimes Tarkin Town's like, I can remove that, but not the thing I really don't like. And that was frustrating. I know it can't target a leader unit, but for the most yeah. part, you're using it to remove anything and everything in, that I was playing against. Yeah, um, and actually... Yeah, it's interesting. You know, there's there are some scenarios where buffing your leader can be a good tactic. You know, I know in some of the later games that we were playing, yep. uh, you were using wing leader to buff Sabine, which is actually a very strong tactic against this because you can't use Tarkin Town to like punch above your weight there. Whereas if you use like if you use wing leader to buff like K2 and he's a 6-6, six, six, you know, I can open fire and then play Tarkin Town. But yep. against Sabine, that same combo isn't there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's... That's I've noticed that basically in most matchups, regardless of deck, you want to suit your leader up because there's so many uh, clauses right now in the first set that say you can target a non-leader unit. So yeah. there's, there's so many cards. doesn't work on leaders. Tarkin yep. Town doesn't work on leaders. Uh, Vanquish doesn't work on leaders. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff. 
Yep, yep. And then most leaders are above five toughness or with a buff, so then takedown is irrelevant. So you're able to get around it. All right, so then Aiden, obviously the the queen of the deck here. Um, I guess, how, how do you see Aiden being played in the deck? How does she synergize more than just her color pie? Like, wh what do you like about this, um, this leader? Yeah, so Aiden is... I currently believe that Aiden is the best healing leader in the game, which is to say that uh, her heal ability on both leader and unit sides uh, can get you a lot of extra HP. Um, so basically, when she's a leader, you have to use an action to heal one, which is not always good. Sometimes you're just going to want to take the initiative instead of using that action. When she's a unit, she gets that same thing as a passive, and it can fire multiple times in a turn, which is really scary. So that can give you um, the the th the healing is really key to Aiden because it allows you to be kind of more of a control deck, but also the healing can buy you extra time against aggro and make you a you. I think you have a much better game against aggro with Aiden than you do with some of the you know more traditional control decks that we were seeing earlier, like Vader Ramp or um, some of the other things where someone is trying to go for like a big late game but doesn't necessarily always get there against Sabine. You know, it's very possible for Sabine to defeat Vader before Vader even gets a chance to deploy. But Aiden deploying as a unit a little earlier and with this ability to heal and buy yourself more time allows you to make a control deck that's less vulnerable to aggro. Um, relative to Krennic, I prefer Aiden both because I think Aiden offers more healing and because I think that deploying Aiden is higher impact than deploying Krennic. So when you deploy Aiden, she's a 4-4 four, four shielded. So someone might say 4-4, four, four, that's a bad stat line for a leader. And yeah, it kind of is. But the fact that you get a shield, that shield often represents a substantial amount of extra HP. And it means you're safe from other plays that can be really dangerous. So like a, a common one is Boba Fett with Surprise Strike can take out a 7 HP leader on the turn that they deploy. That's just 7 damage right there. But if I deploy, I, so if I was deploying Luke, for instance, you know, they can surprise strike him with Boba and just get him off the board immediately. But Aiden, because of that shield, isn't vulnerable to something like that. Now, in exchange, you are vulnerable to some things that other leaders aren't as much. So, for instance, Takedown can actually kill Aiden through her shield. Yeah. Um, or someone can use a saboteur unit to attack into Aiden. Uh, and it can cause you a lot of problems. Actually, the uh, the really funny one is that Aiden has a dangerous situation against Cassian Andor in particular because they both deploy on six resources and Cassian has built-in saboteur and four attacks. So he can just attack Aiden and defeat her through her shield. It's important that you get Aiden on the field before they get their Cassian on the field, if possible, in that matchup. Um, interesting. But yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, it's a lot of healing, uh, especially when you get her on her unit side, you can get a lot of healing, um, you know, potentially. I've had games where it's like, oh yeah, Aiden healed for seven HP this game. And, you know, that can easily be the difference between winning and losing, so. Absolutely, yeah, I found that if I can remove her with like Rogue Operative, that, because her unit side is so much better, so much better than her leader side. Her leader side's actually like, I think it's kind of meh, but then this side, it's like, yeah, it's, oh, it's... you kill, you remove three units, you heal three. It's however much right. you remove. And that that's what scares me is like how much you can heal with the leader side because it's repetitive. Yeah, and suddenly those like Death Star Stormtrooper trading with some other small unit is looking really good when not only do we get that trade, but we also get a, a hit point back to the base. It's nasty. Yeah, yeah, it is nasty. All right, so let's take a look at the sideboard. Oh, yeah, sideboard here. So I got, I pulled each card in. Um, thought I just kind of, I think you have five cards in the sideboard or four, but um, Avenger is the first one I wanted to pull in because it was probably the most unique. Yeah, so Avenger is a game for control, is a card for control mirrors. Um, you're not getting to nine resources against aggro, or if you did, you probably already won the game. Um, like not literally won the game, but you're, pro you're probably already stabilized. Um, it is a big battleship that uh, when you play it, it defeats a non-leader unit they control, and if they don't deal with it, it does the same thing every time it attacks. Really, really solid against other like big control decks and big late game units. Um, I don't love this card uh, in normal matchups. I don't think it's necessary in a lot of normal matchups. Um, but when you're up against a control deck that has more big late game stuff, it can be useful to have. Yeah, because you're not playing Vader and they are, so you got to be able to like fight back somehow. You're playing Duco, but Vader is obviously the stronger card, I think. 
So it yeah. makes sense. And then you got Palpatine here, which seems like very similar, right? It's it's the ground version of Avenger. Yeah, and Palpatine also has a nice effect. So this deck doesn't have overwhelming barrage, um, but Palpatine allows you to do a an overwhelming barrage like effect where you spread damage across multiple enemy units. So he can defeat one big unit or he can defeat several small units. And I do yeah. actually have two copies of Palpatine in main deck and then one in sideboard, I believe, in the in the current iteration of this. Um, I think Palpatine is a more flexible card than Avenger, and I'm happier to have him overall um, in the like mid-range matchups. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, I don't know if I missed that or if I was looking at an older version of the deck list, but yeah, um, this card, it seems really good. I mean, the fact that I can, you know, remove multiple units is a two slash three for one. Seems pretty reasonable with this card. And then Vanquish in the sideboard here. Yep. So I think of Vanquish as a sideboard card because it's expensive. Um, it costs five to defeat a non-leader unit. This this is really good if the opponent has like, you know, big and powerful units and it's really bad if they don't. So, you know, if I'm playing against like some Leia or Sabine turbo aggro build that has nothing above four cost, um, this is a situation where this is not going to be efficient. But, you know, if someone's playing Fett's Fire Spray, this is a great answer. If someone or, you know, maybe my opponent has an Avenger of their own. Great situation for a Vanquish. Yeah, absolutely. I think this card makes sense against, you know, other mirrors or even mid mid range games where you're able to remove problematic units. Unquestionable. Yep. Uh, besides the leaders, of course, Wor but works through shields also. So bombing run here. This is actually so this is a tech card. Um, I had there's a chance this will come out, but I actually I put this card into the sideboard actually based on some of the games that we were playing because I did win the, the the initial match, but as we were playing more games, it got a lot more even when you were doing more of a swarm tactic and playing a lot of smaller units. And yeah. it made me think maybe this card is sort of the answer that I want to have against that kind of swarm tactic that some of the other removal struggles to deal with. And so it's kind of an experimental thing. It's possible this will come out with more testing, but it does allow you to sort of nuke an arena. And if the opponent has a lot of smaller cards, which are often difficult to deal with until you get to Palpatine, this can potentially do a lot of damage. And if you have Aiden on the board, it can potentially be a lot of healing in one action as well. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, this card seems scary to me. I think where Sabine or an aggro deck can pivot is to try to go to both arenas. So this doesn't clear the entire board. Um, but yeah, yeah. that's a lot of times you can then kind of use your selective removal to clean up the other arena. So definitely a really strong card. I'm not sure how good it is either because it is five and there, yeah. are some, there are some circumstances. What if I have a buffed unit in space? This does nothing to that, right? right? So that's where I think yeah. this card could be bad in that situation. Yeah, true. It does, uh, you know, if, you, if it does hit a buffed unit though, you know, let, let's say that the opponent had like, you know, Green Squadron A-Wing into Wing Leader or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can still play this, kill the Wing Leader, damage the A-Wing, and then take it out with Tarkin Town. It's not terrible, but yeah. it doesn't kill, kill it like cleanly and prevent, prevent it from attacking. Yeah, definitely, definitely combos well with Tarkin Town too. Like you could play this, then whatever you didn't remove, you can use Tarkin Town to finish maybe like a four toughness card on their side. It's really good. And then the, here's your last copy of System Patrol Craft, just assuming more Sentinel for space against aggro. Yep, if someone has uh, if someone has a deck with a bunch of those small space fighters, you know, System Patrol Craft get, goes in there, just just extra defense in space. Awesome, yeah, well that's the entire deck. Uh, thank no, you no, for... there, there's, oh. there's one card we missed, there's one card we missed and it's actually very important. We missed, um, let's go back the one, here. No, the, the one card that we missed, oh, um, I don't think we had, no, no, we talked about Palpatine. I don't think we had a highlight on Power of the Dark Side. And Power oh. of the Dark Side is a really, really important card for this deck. Um, yeah, that, I'll zoom in so, on that. Yep, yeah, it's a, that's a three drop. You're right, I did miss that. So Power of the Dark Side. Yeah, so this is a, an opponent chooses a unit they control, defeat that unit. This card is really, really, really good. It's one of the main reasons to play this color combination. So the thing about Power of the Dark Side is it does not say non-leader unit. Power of the Dark Side, unlike a lot of other removal effects, can just kill your opponent's leader for three resources. That is so strong. It is like crazily strong. And I've had games where someone deploys, you know, Boba or Luke or Vader or something as their only unit on the board and I play Power of the Dark Side and it's like, oh, that is it's brutal to face that. Um, now, 
uh, as we were sort of discussing earlier when we were talking about bombing run, um, if the opponent is going wide and playing a lot of smaller units, Power of the Dark Side gets a lot less value. But it's so good in situations where you can keep the board small or where the opponent is relying on one big unit or like upgrades to buff some unit or something that I think it's kind of an instrumental card for the deck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it looks like I did miss that. And I didn't I did miss the Palpatine in the main board here, too. So you have two copies of that. Yeah, those are Power of the Dark Side is a really tough card, especially if if you're kind of going Voltron and trying to build a huge unit that almost all of yeah. your cards in your main deck can't do anything to without like stringing together multiple actions and multiple cards. Um, Power of the Dark Side is like a clean sweep trade. Like take yours, I play one card and I get rid of all of your value. And that card yeah. has been problematic for me. Um, I think keep that like people who are playing against the uh, blue black um, or Vigilance Villainy decks, you got to keep that in mind when you're playing. Like if we're trying to go Voltron or a lot of times you got to play another unit, don't take the initiative because that might give them the incentive to just slam a part of the dark side with the next chance they get um, or on, yep. that subsequent on that subsequent action. So I've I found myself trying to play around this card as much as possible. It's a very strong yeah, it's card. A, it's a, it, yeah, really strong card. Um, so this deck actually does not have upgrade removal in its current form. I normally like to have upgrade removal. Um, I currently am not running it. But Power of the Dark Side can help with that because if someone does something like, you know, uh, Jedi Lightsaber and Yoda is a good example of a like kind of mid-game play that can be really, really tough to deal with. But Power of the Dark Side can uh, can take them out in that situation. Yeah, that does the, make um, sense. And I do think there's at least an argument that like, I don't know, you know, maybe I'll test bombing around and it won't work out and I'll swap to like three disabling fang fighters and get some attach uh, some upgrade removal in the sideboard. I think there is at least an argument for that. But power of the dark side and also vanquish kind of help because they can take out a powerful unit even with those attachments. Yeah, totally. Yeah, very strong. Um, I'll be excited to play you in the top cut tournament in March. I believe you made the top cut. Will you be participating? Uh, I I hope to yeah you know we'll, we'll have to see we'll have to see how it goes you know there could be could be unexpected circumstances but uh, but I hope to I uh, hope to take part in that yeah totally uh, so we'll we'll be playing in that top cut tournament I'll be probably doing uh, post game analyses on that but thank you so much Tower Number Nine uh, for for joining today please go and subscribe to him I put his link or to his channel in the description you are posting great content on Star Wars Unlimited you've thank been you. a bastion of the community honestly like. You are a part of the foundation of this game, so um, <laughs> definitely. What? Well, I, I don't know if I would say I'm a bastion as much as I would say that I posted a lot, but uh, that, well, that's yeah, it. No, I mean, yeah, I, you, I got that's all you gotta of, do. I got a lot of stuff on there. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of stuff. You've done a lot of streaming of, of games and volunteered a lot of your free time. So definitely check that out. And I also will put your deck link in the in the description. Very strong deck, and I believe you did. You were the first person to kind of bring this deck into existence, correct? Like into notoriety. Let me think about that. I I don't know that I was the absolute. No, I, I wasn't the first person to play. I wasn't the first person to play Red Iden, but I think I played it maybe more prominently than some others. Sure. Um, I think that the um, the concept of Red Iden I had actually got from who was it that I got it from? Uh, was it? Let me think about that. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. Put it in I'm the comments. To remember yeah. who it was. I'll pin your comment. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I. I think it was. Uh, I think it was. I, I got the idea from someone else. But I started playing it in the league in a bunch of games, and it it became somewhat prevalent. So the um, the build. A lot of people have been playing Green Iden. I actually prefer Red Iden personally. I like having that extra removal, especially in the early game. I feel like it's better against aggro than Green Iden is. Sure, and yeah. that seems like pretty relevant, uh, a pretty relevant capability to have right now. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of Aiden in this game. She's, she's fun to use. She has kind of a, not, not like totally unique. There's other leaders that have healing, but like the way that she does it, I, I I'm, I'm a big fan. So totally. yeah, overall, yeah. overall, I think it's a fun and cool deck. Probably my favorite control deck right now. Um, yeah, you know, it's got some, it's got some stuff. I, I'd suggest trying it out and seeing, seeing how it does for you. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, uh, I hope everyone enjoys going to pre-release because I'm going to post this video today if I can. Uh, but pre-release is this weekend, so uh, I hope you're going to. Um, and I'm excited. I hope I pull a showcase, of course, and sell it for $1,000 on eBay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. See you, everyone.